Dear friends, we're diving into the world of machine learning and our next speaker, Aman Smirnov, we will, will give us a talk about our machine learning in the audio domain. So please welcome Raman Smirnov. Hi, every hi everyone. Nice to see you all here. Uh, yeah, today we are going to talk about the machine learning in the audio domain and uh, when the neural network is overkill or what are the limits of lightweighted models. Uh, my name is Roman Smirnov. I'm machine learning engineer at Exynos. Uh, Exynos is a multi-asset broker company uh, where we do a lot of fundamental and applied research in fields of machine learning and, and artificial intelligence to improve our business. Uh, before Exynos, I was working in uh, Skyeng and different labs. And today I'm going to cover my experience from both Exynos and Skyeng. Uh, what I'm going to talk about, uh, it's like table of contents. We'll start with some general speech about what is audio domain, some, uh, some problem statement, uh, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, problem statement, I mean, why machine learning and my topic, my speech is on high load conference, how it can be even related to high load. Uh, that's a name problem statement. Then we'll cover some audio domain tasks. Uh, and then we'll go to some exper experiments and business tasks. I'll show some models, uh, some statistics about their training process uh, and comparison of the results of these models. Uh, I know that in the end of my speech, you'll have some time to ask questions, but just to warm up, I want to ask you some questions. Uh, first of all, uh, Please raise your hands if anybody worked with audio data, with audio. Wow, that's cool. Uh, I have three or four questions, so it will be short. Uh, second question is, uh, uh, again, please raise your hands who have ever used neural networks, gradient boostings, or other machine learning stuff. Wow, 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 that's super great. OK, uh, one more question. Uh, who knows that GPU training and inference is much faster and much more expensive than CPU? That's great. Uh, I think I can, <laughs> I can end my presentation here because you uh, know everything. I'm joking because I have some, some more insights. Well, okay. Uh, I know that it's a good it's not a good practice to start definitions with word when or where, but I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> in my topic, uh, rela relating to my presentation, to my speech, audio domain is uh, when <laughs> we work with uh, audio data, with some sounds, speech, and so on, using data analysis, using machine learning techniques, using deep learning, neural networks, and so on. Where we usually face uh, audio domain works with machine learning. Basically, it's our virtual assistants like Siri in our iPhones, or even uh, speech and music generation. Uh, going to the problem statement I mentioned. Audio data is metadata. It's highly unstructured data. And we, we, we know that uh, when we work with images, with texts, and again, with audio, we usually use neural networks. If you Google for any state-of-the-art solution in these domains, you'll find tons of neural networks approaches. And according to modern tendency and so on, <laughs> uh, most of these models are huge transformers models. They are really big and slow. Uh, even if you, um, 
Yeah, basically, I really like Transformers. <laughs> Transformers architecture and Transformers models are my favorite one. And even if you give me some data, some table data, some structured data, and give me some tasks to process it, the first thing I'll do, I'll, tr I'll train Transformer model to work with table data. Uh, well, sometimes it works, but usually it's really overkill. Because to work with table data, like structured data, we usually use CatBoost, like GBM, and some other gradient boosting techniques. Because they are really better to work with structured data. Not always, but they like common practice. But why neural network is overkill? Why transformer is overkill? Uh, here are some statistics. Uh, just a small intro in one of the tasks, tasks I'm going to cover today. For example, we trained model to work with audio data. Uh, we used GPU acceleration, and one epoch of training was around eight hours. Seven hours is to read data. Total for, was for the first epoch was 15 hours. So eight hours is just training and inference only for one file, only for one audio file, it takes more than one second to inference on GPU using this huge transformer model. Uh, but the question is, is it possible to use some lightweight models to work with metadata, with, uh, with audio data? Because again, uh, Cut boost and uh, Yandex cut boost and other gradient boostings are really, really nice, really good in table data processing. That's the question I'm going to answer today. Uh, but first of all, I'm gonna going to cover some other audio domain tasks we usually have just just to like describe what is audio data, uh, audio data, audio domain in machine learning. Uh, I think all the tasks in audio domain uh, can be separated to understanding and generation tasks, like it's done in natural language processing, uh, and yeah, like in natural language processing. Uh, what is understanding? Uh, the, the here is a not full list of all possible audio domain understanding tasks. This only list uh, of tasks I have ever solved. Uh, so if you know other audio understanding tasks in machine learning, please feel free just to add to this list in the end of my presentation. It would be great. Uh, so in understanding, we have, for example, classification tasks. It's a situation when we have audio sequence, uh, audio data, and we want to label it somehow. For example, it can be emotion classification. We want just to label our audio, whether the speaker there was happy, was angry, and so on. Other tasks, a task is uh, token, cl token classification. Uh, usually it's used for voice activity detection. It's, for example, a situation when we, ha when we have long audio sequence. Uh, where so there are some noises, some, I don't know, some birds, <laughs> some cars riding somewhere, and the small parts with speech, with some person speaking about something. And we want just to extract exactly the part where the person is speaking. I, uh, this task is called voice activity detection. Uh, one more task is speaker separation or diarization, uh, again, uh, imagine we have a long audio with many speakers in it, uh, speaking about different stuff, or we have a lot of audios and we want to understand that, for example, in these three audios, it is one speaker, and and that four audios, it is another speaker. And uh, speaker separation task is about this separation audios to different speakers. And of course, uh, the last but not the least, understanding task is Automatic speech recognition, uh, speech-to-text technologies. It's again what our Siri and our iPhones do, like to understand what we are talking, when, when we are talking some comments to the Siri and so on. Uh, 
one interesting and trading other sphere of uh, our LMA in is generation. Uh, what is it about? Uh, remember I talked about automatic speech recognition is where we have speech and we want to get text out of it. Uh, imagine the opposite process when we have text and we want to have voice out of this text. Uh, that's called text-to-speech and one more thing is voice cloning and that the same situation we have text we want to have voice but we want to this voice to like to sound like some speaker so we clone voice of some speaker to make him speak in some stuff and of course it's uh, music generation uh, yeah first of all I want you to look on the bottom part of this slide uh, here you can see this strange image, N not this crazy fox, the other one. Uh, this male spec, uh, it's representation of voice, of sound, and all current text-to-speech, voice clone technol text, uh, usually generate male spec, and then we use some vocoders to get raw audi audio from this image. So. The only thing I want you to, to understand here uh, is to that the audio, this raw waveform, can be represented in form of some image. Uh, I'll get it to it a bit later, but just keep in mind that the audio can be represented in this way. Uh, about this crazy fox, uh, who has ideas? What is it? W what is this crazy fox? Why is here? Okay, I, uh, yeah. Uh, I already answered some questions, so it's <laughs> one more question is overkill. Uh, it's illustration of trending stable diffusion models uh, where they can take some raw image and generate much better image. Why is here? Uh, basically, uh, now I'm going to uh, start my like small pet project about uh, using stable diffusion, using some uh, decoder generation stuff to generate some music. So if anybody is interested in stable diffusion, in audios, please feel free just to contact me in my contacts after the presentation. Uh, it's great thing. I think all the conferences as for me is a, a great thing to communicate, cooperate. Well, so again, feel free. Uh, let's get to, to business, uh, to more serious part, serious stuff. Uh, I'm going to describe two tasks. They are much simpler than I described before. Uh, but there are two real tasks we solved with lightweight model and with huge transformer model. Uh, I'll describe again business task, training statistics, and the result. And we all together may answer the question where, when the neural networks are overkill and where are the limits of lightweight models. Okay, uh, the first task is ju just a simple classification task. Imagine we have a call center and we want to, uh, to classify whether the connection between our operator and client is good or bad. Uh, bad connection, I mean, you know, when we have some robo voicing, some technical, technical noises, some, I don't know, some, some, some random noises at all. Uh, let's call it unstable connection or whatever. Uh, on the other hand, we have stable connection. The situation when the connection is good, we can understand everything the operator said, everything the client said, and so on. We try to collect such a data set. We like, extract tons of our audio files. Uh, of course, this data set was highly imbalanced because usually connection is good. Uh, but we found that there is some part of audio 
that we can't say like whether it's good or not. So it's this yellow or orange thing in the center, because we like it, we in these audios we basically could understand what speaker what speaker what the client said, but we uh, heard a lot of artifacts like some noises, some robot voice, and, and such such things, and we. We need to build a model to classify these three things. That's the first task. The second task I'm going to cover is regression task. As I said, I'm going to cover my experience from both Exynos and Skyeng. And this task is a Skyeng task. We, we hire English teachers. We hired English, English teachers and... Uh, uh, we have to, to make interview of these candidates, like the first stage of onboarding process. Uh, usually, uh, these candidates answer three, four, or five questions in English. Uh, and then our special guys listen to these audios and score whether this person is a good speaker or bad speaker from zero to 100 score points. Uh, and we wanted to automate it. We wanted to like make a machine, machine to make a model that can hear answers for all the questions and score the candidate whether he is good or whether he is bad. And as a result, uh, we had this model. Uh, if model scores were the candidate very low, we just we can decline him. If the model scores very high, we can accept him to the further steps of onboarding. And if we have, if the model predicts some medium score, uh, it's on that stage that I remember uh, we uh, moved it to human verification. That's the second task. So we have two tasks. First is just classification task, um, simple enough. Uh, the second task is regression task, and we have two models. First model is just a cut boost, ju ju just uh, very, very good, very fast uh, Yandex technology, uh, gradient boosting on decision trees. Uh, it's really, it's really fast and it's really good for table data. But here we have other domain, uh, and we have to extract some statistics from audio to work with this audio using cut boost. Uh, that's the problem because we, we have to uh, create these features out of audio to use CatBoost. Well, on the opposite corner of our ring is state-of-the-art uh, wave to work to architecture, pre-trained architecture. Uh, th this model is a real uh, one of state-of-the-arts for speech recognition tasks. You can see that uh, architecture is really m much, much more heavy than just a cut boost trees. Uh, here you can see convolution layers, you can see transformer. So it used both convolution layers and attention mechanism to extract both local and global features. So this model extract features by itself. Uh, the main question here, yeah, but is, it, is this model really fast? And uh, you might think that the winner of this fight between wave to vec and cat boost is obvious, but we are on high load. So we are uh, looking not only on accuracy metric, but speed is also very important for us. So let's compare them in these both two direction. Uh, even more serious part uh, about the training and pre-processing stuff. Uh, let's start from the right side of the slide. Uh, what should we do to make data preparation for wave to vec 2 model training? Basically, again, it's really a uh, huge, really difficult uh, architecture. Uh, it requires a lot of computational resources. Uh, we change sample rate of our audio. Usually audio files uh, have uh, sampling rate uh, more than 
40,000 hertz, and we resample it to 16,000 hertz. What does it mean? Uh, the sampling rate is how many audio measurements do we have in one second of audio. Uh, and for uh, wave to vec 2 model, we use uh, truncation to make long audios shorter. Why do we do it? Uh, basically, it's because this model is huge and we want to make less data to train it. Well, on the other hand, it's gradient boosting on decision trees. Again, it's cut boost. Uh, we have to extract statistics uh, while for wave to wave 2 it using these a lot of layers it extracts statistics but oh, it's not statistics the features by itself and for gradient boosting we have to extract statistics uh, yeah here are some words like we just collect uh, amplitude and mal statistics using this mean median and so on but to make it more clear let's back to this image uh, we have raw audio form, uh, waveform, raw audio. What is it? It's like measurements of sound during some timeline. Uh, where the, uh, when the amplitude of audio is high, then the sound there is louder. Uh, and different, uh, different sounds in wild nature have different frequencies. So, for example, some technical noises or human speech have different uh, different frequencies. Uh, so, first of all, we can extract just simple statistics from a raw audio form, uh, raw waveform. What it can be? It can be just like uh, medium uh, mean value, medium value, stand standard deviation, uh, and so on, minimum maximum values. Okay. But that's not enough. Uh, the th thing we can do is to transform this audio data uh, from our audio waveform to MEL spec. Uh, what is MEL spec? We can use, just I'm trying to describe it simpler, we can use Fourier transformation, it's just a row of code, to translate our audio from time domain to frequency time domain. So we can receive this image where, again, we have time and frequency. So we separate our audio to different frequencies. And when we have this image, imagine it's like an, a, a matrix where we have time, frequencies, and like a power of these frequencies in different times. We can even extract some features from every frequency in our, okay, let's say image, matrix, whatever. So we can have a lot of a lot more features, but the features we extract are the same. It's like mean, medium, uh, min max, standard deviation, kurtosis, just just the same. And we use all these statistics to train our model. Uh, that's our training uh, train train intro, like. Uh, for gradient boosting on decision trees, we have cat boost. We use small trees because we have tons of features and not so many uh, samples. Uh, we tested different number of iterations. It's for gradient boosting on decision tree. For wave to vec 2 model, we use not the biggest one. We use wave to vec 2 uh, base model. Again, it's per train, transformer. Still huge, not the not the biggest, but still huge. Uh, we use like the standard things to work with wave to vec model. We freeze feature encoder, use some uh, learning rate schedules, and train it. Not train, fine tune it only for ten epochs. Time metrics for the first task, for the task of classification, when we wanted to train model for separate good or bad audios. Just imagine, we, we spend the, the similar time to pre-process data, uh, to read and pre-process. It was 40 mo 45 minutes for both of the models. Again, for gradient boosting, it's we read data, we create mal specs, we extract all statistics, that's it. 
for wave to vec 2 model. We again read data, uh, resample it, truncate, that's it. For training, we, we use GPU instances for training both of these models. To train gradient boosting, it takes, it took in this case, less than one second to train model on GPU. For wave to vec 2 model, it took five hours to train over these 10 epochs. You can see that the data set was the same, the similar in both cases. It was uh, 5,000 fi files. Okay, what about inference? Here I uh, provide some statistics on inference, but it's inference in CPU, not GPU, because inference in CPU is much cheaper. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and we are on high load, so. <laughs> uh, I tested on five files, both of the models, and for gradient boosting on decision trees, it took only, again, less than one second to inference and some time to read the data. For wave to vec 2 model, we spend the same time to read data, but it took more than 100 seconds to inference on CPU. That's the first task classification. What about the regression task when we had to score our candidates? There, on, uh, on this task, we had a uh, much bigger data set, so it took, it took much more to train this model. You can see that the inference time is basically the same because the models are, architecture of these models are basically the same. But for training, again, for uh, 40,000 files for gradient boosting took like five minutes to train GPU. For wave to vec 2 this huge big uh, architecture, w we spent like around 100 hours. It's incredible. Bec and we still use batch size, not one. <laughs> uh, and we have not, we have a good GPU accelerator. We used our Twix 39 TTI with 24 gigabytes. It's, it's like, it's a real good GPU. But again, it took so many time, so many hours. Uh, what do you think? Which model won? Transform. <laughs> no? Transform. Oh, right question. Yeah, what is the definition of one? Yeah, well, uh, I'm not sure which model won. I'm just showing you the results, the statistics you just, uh, the statistics you suggest now. So uh, I suppose you have to decide which model won. That's the first model, the our classification task. Here is uh, confusion matrix. Uh, just a few words about confusion matrix. Uh, in this classification task, again, we have slightly bad audio class, bad and okay, like uh, good connection, bad connection, and slightly bad connection. And we did here like natural imbalance, like our data is in wildlife. Uh, again, uh, Columns are model predictions, and rows are like human labels. You can see here that uh, left, left uh, matrix is for gradient boosting on decision trees, right matrix is for wave to vec model. You can see that uh, basically gradient boosting on decision trees did good separation between bad connection and good connection. Like, you have, you, you can see that, okay, okay, it's like, like a perfect hit. Bad, bad is also not so bad. Uh, and you, ha you can see here that it is like a mistake of two audio files. I, uh, I was surprised and I listened to these audios. And these were uh, audios that really had some artifacts in the speech. So. We, we, lab we labeled it like it's okay audio, but in fact, it was not. It was not really bad, but it was not a real good one. So you can see that gradient boosting did a good separation between good and bad, but it can't understand slightly bad audios. On the other hand, wave to vec 2 model 
also need good separation between good and bad audios in this highly imbalanced data set, but also it performs good on slightly bad audios. Uh, ju I'm just describing, no, not any like hints what is better. The second task, uh, here we had regression task, it's the situation when we score our candidates from 0 to 100 points. Again, it's confusion matrix. What you can see, how we usually read confusion matrix? When it's like diagonal, it's good. When it's not diagonal, it's bad. Uh, you can see that basically in both cases, in covariant boosting and decision trees and in wave to vec model, it seems to be a bit diagonal. Uh, of course, wave to vec performs better, but gradient boosting is not so far. It, for, for me, really, it was a surprise that for this not typical, really difficult task like regression, uh, li li like scoring candidates based on their audio files, extracting these statistics I described just from the raw audio and from mail specs, the accuracy of cut boost was not zero. I expected like real zero, but it's not so bad. Uh, you can see, who thinks that it is, that cat boost is real bad on this task? It's not, it's not very bad, it's like, not, not very good, but not, not so bad. Well, yeah, that's it. For me, it was a big surprise, and again, uh, me as a machine learning engineer, usually when we face some, when I face some tasks, maybe there are many better machine learning engineers that do uh, better stuff. But for me, when I face some task, I usually, like, mm, some, some new task. I usually Google state-of-the-art solution, and again, basically it's neural networks, basically it's transformer model, so usually it's really heavy models. But we can use, in some cases, we can use, like, this simple gradient boosting thing. Uh, about the outcomes, uh, again, we are on the high load, so we are talking not about the accuracy only, uh, and we always have this trade-off of time, money, accuracy, and this never a win-win-win situation. Uh, in practice, uh, and the, these matrices and these uh, instances were like uh, from the first steps of both of the projects I described. For classification task on the first stages, we really took gradient boosting because it's really cheap, it's really fast, and the results are pretty nice because for us it was very important to separate really bad and really good audios. And so, okay, gradient boosting, as I showed you, like on classification task, doesn't work on slightly bad audios. But again, for us, it's the main thing is bad or good. That's it. So, firstly, we took it. Uh, for regression task, for this uh, scoring of candidates, um, we took wave to wave 2 model. Uh, and I'll show you why. Because for us, it was very important to be accurate on the uh, middle scores around 50. And you can see here that uh, cat boost fails around 45. Like you can see that audio audios that were labeled by human human by, uh, with 45 score, uh, 40, 45, 50. Uh, cat boost label all them like 45. And wave to wave did much better thing. So for regression task again, we took wave to vec to model. So now I'm going to invite you to discussion, really, where are the limits of lightweighted models and what is, over uh, what is overkill? Is neural network really strange thing to, to solve some maybe simple tasks? Well, and again, uh, before we come to questions, Feel free just to message me if you want, if you have some ideas about stable diffusion stuff or anything other, any other interesting pet projects. I'm really a fan of pet projects. So <laughs> feel free. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you very much. We have, I see we have uh, some hands here. Let's start. We have a mic over there. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm from Yandex. My name is Anatoly Starstin. Uh, one question and one suggestion. Question is about the last slide uh, about regression. I didn't uh, understand completely how did you get human labels for the regression? What is human labels here? Uh, it's labels that uh, real hum our special guys labeled our data. So they candidates. really labeled from uh, with some fraction from zero to yeah, uh, from zero to ten. So, uh, uh, no so they gave such accurate estimate. Uh, they uh, it's like five points step, so it's zero, five, ten, and so on. Okay. They score in this. I, I mean uh, that uh, for humans, it's quite complex task to give such. Uh, Accurate est estimations. There were so. some sub metrics that I didn't cover in this uh, speech, but basically there were some fluency, pronunciation, grammar, lexical stuff, and the model do all the scores. So it does. It try tries to predict the overall score and okay. all separate score. Yeah. Now I got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, and this uh, suggestion or, or question uh, is l like follows. Have you considered some, uh, as third uh, mm -hmm. uh, option, uh, some distillation methods uh, for, uh, 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 wave uh, for, for, yes, uh, for wave to wave? Uh, I mean that uh, training will take long, but uh, inference maybe uh, you can speed up it uh, very, uh, very good uh, and uh, do not lose uh, accuracy. Uh, well, yeah, thank you for the question. For about the distillation, yeah, of course, we tried it. Uh, I'm not sure about this regression task because it was like some time ago. Uh, well, okay, yeah. Uh, for other models, when we used, uh, again, wave to wave for our audio things, of course, we did distillation. We even tried some other techniques like quantization and so on. Uh, yeah, yeah, I fully agree it works. It uh, improves uh, performance of model in these terms. But, but still gradient boosting is <laughs> much faster. <laughs> we have a question in front. Yeah, thank you very much for such a great speech. I'm not an expert on gradient boosting and table models, uh, and I wonder how you pre-process the metrics of future and time. Uh, I can imagine how you handle the frequencies, but how you turn, uh, how you handle the time in tables for gradient boosting. Uh, well, yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, may, may I open that slide, or, yeah, okay. This one, yep. Uh, we, again, about the uh, raw audio, we can just uh, take absolute values of audio of our waveform and just, for example, take mean value, like sum everything and so on. Uh, also, we can take medi median value, mi minimum value, maximum value, standard deviation, for example, yeah. Uh, so we uh, extract this feature over all this timeline. Uh, about the MEL spec, that's basically the same situation. We have uh, some data on every uh, frequency over the whole time. And we aggregate these statistics over the time axis. So we, again, take mean over the whole time in some frequency. Did I answer your question? A actually, no. The, the question ah, is that I we see. have a matrix on the male spectrogram yep. and how you handled it, uh, how you put it in gradient boosting, the, the, ma the matrix, I mean. Uh, we just extracted statistics over several... Uh, over the time? Over several beans of frequencies. Ah, okay, good. Thank you very much. Any more questions? 
you can ask questions online on our Telegram chat. I have one question regarding the pre-processing of data. You told us that uh, you truncated to yeah. a fixed uh, duration. Do you like stretch it or uh, cut uh, cut long uh, like long speeches in uh, in a fixed length uh, like sprints? Mm. Thank you for the question. Is uh, if I correctly understood your question. For both of these tasks, we uh, first think we truncate all the audios for one minute. So it was one minute splits. Uh, for regression tasks, it generally one minute is was like medium length of all the audios. Uh, not medium, I'm not, I'm not sure about medium, but uh, there, there were not many audios that were much longer than one minute. So we just cut it and loot this tail because, okay, it was not so uh, important. I, I understand that it's not a like <laughs> perfect solution, <laughs> but we did this. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? No? Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you, Roman. You have a task to pick the best question. And our audience here have a task to rate the mm -hmm. talk, scan QR code, make your mark. Can I choose not the question, but the comment about the uh, what is good, uh, what is like winning this model? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Because <laughs> it was like really. Uh, Really, the thing I meant during the my, the my speech that in when we talk about the high load systems, it's not always about the accuracy; it's also about other metrics. So, so I think the that person, the person over here. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. A round of applause for Roman. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.